guys and welcome back to another All Heart video. Today I thought I would give you an updated tour of my daughter's shelf work. I believe the last time that I showed you the activities that she was working on was about five months ago. So since then we have changed up a lot of her activities. It's basically a progression of the activities that she was working on before. So the level of difficulty has gone up just a little bit. So let me start off by showing you some of the activities that used to be on my daughter's shelf. And then I will show you how I have changed those activities in order for them to be just a little bit more difficult and challenging for her since the activities that she used to have have become a, a bit too easy and she's kind of lost interest in those. So that's basically the perfect time for you to be able to change activities by either switching them out completely if they are just completely not interested in those activities or by perhaps just giving them a bit more of a challenging way of working through that activity. Hopefully that'll give you a better idea as to how to change up your shelf work as they continue to learn and they continue to progress in the activities that you already have set out for them. So if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and get started on this video. So on her shelf activities from before, so we're talking about five months past, I had set out for her a few of these geometric puzzles and they're perfect in size. They have the very large knobs, so it's very it was very easy for her to be able to grip, remove, and place them back. And they come in a set of four. So it's got the larger circle, the smaller size circle. We also have the triangle and the square. So it was perfect for her to learn her initial geometric shapes and also to kind of distinguish the primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. So it worked perfect for that. And she was very highly engaged with this puzzle at the very beginning and it lasted for quite a while. So it was on her shelf for months and months and months before she decided to kind of lose interest in them because again, it was very easy for her to do. So I wanted to, her to continue working on learning more of her geometric shapes and I wanted her to kind of work on different activities while also learning these shapes. So this is the new activity that I have for her on her new shelf. These are metal geometric insets and when she is either tracing them and now she's only two and a half. So she's still having difficulty coordinating her hand in order to kind of trace the outline of the shape when you remove the center. So what I have her do is with different colored crayons that she chooses, she will go ahead and color the picture. So I have metal inset tracing paper and they're already sold in this size so that it fits perfectly inside. And then she will pick the shape that we are working on and she will set it there. And I leave this in there just because it gives her one more thing to do in order to recognize the shape. So she will go ahead and pull it out just like she would a normal puzzle. And then she'll get to choose, like I said, her crayons or colored pencils or even watercolors sometimes. And then she will fill in the inside of the space. And that way, when we remove the metal inset, then it'll leave the rectangular picture left behind. It's a fun art activity, but it's also a fun way of her to be able to recognize new shapes because before she didn't know what a rectangle was. The same goes with the Pentagon on this side. She's able to remove the little puzzle piece as it were. She's able to color or, you know, work on her tracing and um, do the same thing that she did on this side. And then again, when we remove the little metal inset, then it'll leave behind the image of the Pentagon. So slowly as she starts to work through these, I have 
the remaining shapes and I'm able to switch these out. So this is something that she's going to be able to grow with. So this was an activity that used to be on my daughter's shelf work a few months ago as well. And it's just a simple shape sorter. So let me go ahead and show you how we've kind of upgraded the different uses for this toy with different activities that I have now set up on her shelf. So just like that shape sorter was working on kind of fine tuning her fine motor skills, I wanted to include this geo board. So she doesn't know how to utilize the uh, little cards that are included in order to create specific pictures. So right now she's just focusing on placing the little rubber bands on the little slots and then kind of pulling them through. So that's really the activity that has really, really engaged her interest. And she tries to use as many of the little rubber bands as she can. And she's just kind of putting the little rubber band through one of the slots, pulling it through, and then repeating that activity over and over again. Along with her shape recognition, since we are working on the rectangle and the pentagon, we are working on how to stretch out the rubber band so that it forms the shape of a rectangle as well as the shape of the pentagon. So that is kind of a way of us kind of bringing all of the activities together um, so that she can, again, kind of reinforce learning her shapes that way. So on her last shelf, she also had a few activities that would specifically target um, color identification. So I wanted to keep that going because she still uh, really enjoyed being able to identify colors and she still had sometimes trouble remembering the purple from the pink because I just believe that those are just her two favorite colors and so she kind of interchanges the names of the colors at times. So I wanted to give her more activities to basically really reinforce the color identification process that she's learning. So this is the new activity that I, that I have set out for her. And I also wanted to make it a little bit more engaging and fun by utilizing again more of her fine motor skills so i did include a little wooden tong in order for her to pick all of these little um felt balls and place them on the little corresponding rainbow so let me go ahead and show you that so this is the wooden colorful rainbow now i keep all of the little corresponding felt balls inside of a little basket along with the little wooden tongs. So she has gotten so good at being able to kind of use this pinching motion. And this is perfect for um, having your children really strengthen the little muscles in their hand, especially in preparation for writing. So if your child is having a little bit of trouble still holding their pencil, because most of the time children kind of hold their pencil like this. And that's basically kind of their initial instinct is to kind of grip the entire pencil with their little hand. So this is really going to focus all of that strengthening through these three fingers, which is what you want to do in order for them to learn how to hold the pencil correctly. So I would definitely suggest if your child is having trouble holding a pencil to learn to utilize the little tongs and just place it in their hand, show them what fingers are supposed to be placed where, and then just have them do this action over and over repeatedly until their hand starts to strengthen up for being able to pick up different objects. And you'll see that it's going to help so much with their handwriting. So back to this toy. Um, so this is perfect for her to be able to identify her colors and just really reinforce her learning all of her colors and being able to identify them through the little felt ball. So I absolutely love this activity. And you can also utilize this, the felt balls in different ways. And let me show you how. So with the numbers, I've placed this right next to her little rainbow with the little felt balls. And all we do is I will set out the little number that we are working on. And then on that rainbow, depending on the number, I will have her place the corresponding number of felt balls on the rainbow. So if we are working on number one, I will say, can you find me one red ball? And then she'll go ahead and use the little felt tongs, find one red ball and then place it 
on the red ring of the rainbow. And then I will go ahead and move that number to the back. And now we're working on number two. Can you find me two blue felt balls? And then again, she'll use the little tongs, grab two of the blue little felt balls and then place them on the rainbow. So it's just a wonderful activity for her to not only be able to identify colors, but also do identify quantities and numbers. I also have this beautiful book and it's just called Natural Numbers. And I actually do have the little corresponding number cards uh, that look just like the numbers in the book. And we use that for a lot of our loose toys. So I keep all of the little cards on their little, what I call grab it loose toy table. So again, we read through the book And then with the little felt balls, we are able to identify how many of each. So again, it's just another way of being able to kind of visually see another form of numbers and just another way to kind of reinforce the numbers in her mind. So let's move on. So at the very bottom of her shelf activities, I have this little tray. And inside the little basket are the little corresponding red cylinders that she is able to place in the corresponding slot on these little wooden boards. So all of them have the numbers painted on them. And for now, we just have numbers one through five. And then once she kind of gets the understanding of numbers, from one through five, then I will include the other numbers. You don't want to overwhelm your child by placing everything, um, especially when you are first introducing a new concept to them. So limit it at first and then sl slowly start to introduce some more as they start to progress. So right now we are still kind of reinforcing numbers one through five, and she is able to work on her fine motor skills and hand and eye coordination, by placing the little cylinders in the corresponding slots. So this is another way of reinforcing the number identification. And like I said, hand and eye coordination and fine motor skills. And the final way that we are also reinforcing numbers are through these little wooden pieces that she utilizes the little wooden dowel to string through. So again, we are still working on activities that are going to fine tune her hand and eye coordination and also her fine motor skills. So at the beginning, I had all numbers one through 20 in here. And it wasn't so much because I wanted or expected her to learn numbers one through, ten, uh, through 20 right away, but it was more for the purpose of repetition. I just wanted her to be able to string the dowel through, pull the number all the way down until it hits the very end. So it was more for engaging her hand and eye coordination and fine motor skills. Now, since she has gotten this down very, very well, I wanted to include another challenge. And since we are working on number identifications and just focusing primarily on numbers one through 10, I've taken out the numbers 11 through 20 and just left the numbers one through 10. And now we are learning to string the numbers in order from one through 10. So same activity, just a little bit more difficult. So since the shelf is a little bit bigger than the one that she had when she was much younger, I wanted to place activities at the top that were going to be easy for her to remove. So again, always think of ways to add activities to your shelf that are going to be easy for them to remove. So you don't wanna put things that are too heavy at the top for fear of them falling on them or them getting hurt or them just kind of spilling the activity everywhere. So just make sure that when you are setting up activities for your child, that you are doing so with that in mind. So at the very top, all I have is a puzzle on this side. And this is how we are incorporating our language this time around. So we are working on identifying all of our letters by name. 
Um, and then also being able to identify the sounds. So all of the phonetics. So a ah for a. Um, and with Montessori, they do recommend that you start with the phonetic sounds first. I'm just going to leave that up to you to decide how you want to introduce the letters. But just keep in mind that when you are teaching them how to read, they are going to need to know the sounds of all the letters first in order to really ground them with that foundation. So again, I'm just gonna leave it up to um, you guys to decide which method is best because a lot of parents feel that it's better for them to be introduced to identifying the letters first and then teaching them the sounds and then other parents feel the opposite way. So with us, we work on both hand in hand. And that is the method that I use for my son and he started reading at age four and it's the same method that I'm going to be utilizing with my daughter. So it's up to you guys. Um, but this is one way that we are working on our language development right now and it's just through identifying the letters and identifying the different phonetic sounds for each letter in the form of a puzzle. Whew. And the final thing on my daughter's shelf is over here to the side and you will see the different, and I believe these are, I wanna say they're hape, but I will double check and leave them in the link. So they are different eggs with different expressions to be able to identify emotions. It's very important to be able to have your child focus a lot of their energies and their emotions in a positive way. And I think the most important way to do that is to be able to teach your child how to identify what emotion they are feeling. So these are the things that I have set out in order to start working on this. Now, this is something that we've been working on since she was much younger. However, because we are still working on language, I wanted to give her just different forms and different ways of her being able to express herself and being able to show me what she's feeling and when she's feeling it. So uh, that is the reason why I included some of these books. Now, if you are looking for more resources and tools to teach your children and kind of guide them on being able to work through emotions, I do have a video that I made months and months ago and i will go ahead and leave it in the in the um, description box because it lists so many different books that we have utilized that i absolutely love and that have really made a significant difference so i'll go ahead and leave that in the description box so let me go ahead and show you just a close-up of the books and of the expressions so this is the first book and this was one of the first little books that I got for my son when he was little, and it is just called Little Monkey Calms Down. And it's written very, very simply for younger children to be able to understand. And it's just this very simple concept of this monkey dropping his ice cream and all of the emotions that he goes through when he's having a tough time. So it's, like I said, very simply written, perfect for toddlers and it's a very easy way for them to understand the emotion of sadness and anger. Um, along with that, I do have these different eggs and I usually have these placed on my desk, but because we are definitely focusing on this right now, I wanted to include it on her shelf. So that is why we have it here. And my daughter just loves being able to play with them and she'll show me this egg is sad this egg is scared, this egg is shy, this egg is mad, and so on and so forth. So along with this book, if you guys are looking for a good book to include for Valentine's Day, this is one of our favorites, and it just has very beautiful illustrations in them, and it really does a good job of being able to describe the sorts of feelings that children feel because as we know, children's emotions can be quite big and difficult for them to kind of navigate. Um, so it's, it's a very nice way of giving them another resource to be able to identify what feeling is which. 
And that is it, you guys. That is our updated shelf work for my daughter who is two and a half, almost three years old. So I hope that this was helpful. If you happen to have any further questions, please leave them in the comments below or you can personally message me. My Gmail account is uh, linked in the description box. I do hope that you enjoyed this video and that you gained some new information, especially some more inspiration for you to be able to set up your shelf activities for your toddlers. So thank you so much again for watching and I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.